from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Pat Fitzpatrick. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is a parishioner of St. Joseph Parish in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, in thanksgiving for blessings received, for the living and deceased members of her family, and for those affected by disorders. And the second is from the family of Lucia Pareto of Burnaby, British Columbia, on the occasion of Lucia's 95th birthday on June 13. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass, and we wish Lucia a very happy 95th birthday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. After a while, the wadi where Elijah was hiding dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, go now to Sarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal and a jar, and a little oil and a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid, go. Do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain to the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord.
Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Lord, let your face shine on us. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Lord, let your face shine on us. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than their grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your light shine before all, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. When I uh, read both of today's readings, I was uh, left wondering which one of them gave greater food for thought. In uh, our first reading, God urges the prophet Elijah to come out of hiding now that the heavy rain had drained up and to go up north where he would meet a widow who would look after him. Well, Elijah did come across this widow and he had no hesitation in asking her for a jug of water and a slice of bread. And even when she told him how she and her son were down to their last meal, Elijah didn't back off. Make me a little cake and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. If I were in her shoes, I think I know what I might have said to this prophet 
but it worked out okay. And then our gospel. Our gospel is taken for one of the three chapters that gather together Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And uh, speaking to the apostles he has chosen, he wants to get across to them that in God's eyes, they really count and they will be taken care of. Well, like any good teacher, Jesus speaks to them in words that they will understand and he uses examples to get his point across. They may be just ordinary people, but in his eyes, they are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. They count. I picture them turning to one another and saying, he's talking about us. We're just ordinary nobodies. Well, not in my eyes, he told them. You count. Don't forget that. You are the salt of the earth, each one of you. Think of what salt does to food. It gives flavor, and never forget, a little, a little goes a long way. Salt purifies. Salt preserves. And think of maybe the time you had a swim in the ocean. The saltiness of the water makes it easier to stay afloat. You don't sink so easily in salt water. And don't ever let me hear you say, oh, we're only good for nothing. We don't really count. No, Jesus said, I'm choosing you to be my disciples. Yes, you have it within you to become my disciples my followers. You will help to spread my teachings to others. So hold on to what I tell you and then hand it on to others. Jesus to us, to others. So see that city up there, that town further up on the hill. It stands out, doesn't it? You too will stand out one day. You'll become a lamp to others who are in the dark. I am the light of the world and have come to bring that light to others. But I need people like you to spread it for me. You and others who follow will be asked to let your life shine before others. To let your good works speak for themselves and shine for all to see. That's how God, or the risen Christ, gets through to other people, through us, who allow God to shine through us. And then Jesus goes on, I'll ask you to become keepers of the flame for me. I'll ask you to become maybe my torch bearers, won't always mean you'll be on the podium in first, second, or third place. Down the roads you and I will travel, there aren't gold, silver, or bronze medals waiting for us. But then my mind goes back to a competitor way back in the 1968 Olympic Games. Uh, he ran in the marathon and entered the stadium hobbling on a bandaged leg. The winner had entered the stadium more than an hour earlier. Our runner could have dropped out, but he kept going despite his injured leg. And when he appeared, the small crowd who remained behind to clap him as he made his final round of the track and over the finish line. A reporter asked him, why he had not quit several kilometers earlier. And his answer, my country 
Tanzania did not send me to Mexico City to start the marathon. They sent me to finish it. And I hear Jesus say to his runners, I need people like him to keep going to the end. Please stand. Our prayer intention for the month of June. For all of those in the Daily TV Mass community that have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are facing significant life transitions in their activities, their health, their relationships, their finances, or their housing. For them, we pray to the Lord. For friends in hospital or people we've heard of in hospitals who are struggling to keep going, we pray to the Lord. And for those who keep watch over them, who are nursing to them, we pray to the Lord. Let's take a moment to include our own particular intentions at this Mass. For them, we pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, grant to them and us a heart renewed. Recreate in us your own spirit, Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, you graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries. Grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, of the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another that peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me in this admonition of St. Augustine. Therefore, once and for all, this short command is given to you. Love and do what you will. If you keep silent, keep silent by love. If you speak, speak by love. If you correct, correct by love. If you pardon, pardon by love. Let love be rooted in you, and from the root, nothing but good can grow. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. 